my name is Makeda Valletta, also known as the Body Scientist. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a strength and conditioning specialist and a sports nutritionist and with a background in exercise physiology. And I am here today to talk to you about raw milk and honey, which are two very highly nutritious foods that um, a lot of times are undermined or overlooked. Whatever you cannot, whatever we can't eat, whatever is not good for us to eat is not good for to be in our skin. So if we can't eat something, then it shouldn't be in our skin. Things get into our bloodstream much easier through our skin than it does through our digestive tract. So it's, it's, it's a known fact that, you know, milk, you know, um, people have, women have been taking baths in milk since ancient Egyptian times. Um, milk has lots of properties for the skin. The um, alpha hydroxy acids um, that are in milk help to break up dead skin cells and exfoliate. Um, there's a lot of actual um, good benefits to the skin that milk has when soaking in it. And same thing goes for honey. Honey as well. Honey is a very potent anti, um, has very potent antiviral properties, very potent antibacterial properties, um, very antimicrobial. Honey, well, raw honey, okay, there's a difference between commercial honey and raw honey, which I'll get into. Um, raw honey has lots of enzymes, has many nutrients. Um, all the foods in the bees are highly nutritious, and you can basically survive off them. Um, honey strengthens the immune system, but it's also very good for your skin as well, topically. And this is why we find also honey in a lot of, you know, skin creams and a lot of commercial um, products that are made use honey and milk a lot of times. Stuff you see in the drugstores, but it's all chemicals, you know, but they use that a lot. Raw milk and raw honey, that mixture even, is very good for pre and post workout. Um, so before I get into that, I just want to explain the difference between raw milk and raw honey and regular commercial milk and commercial honey. When it comes to, it depends on what country you're in, but when it comes to the United States or, or all the Americas, the Caribbean, um, South America, Central America, uh, most, you know, a lot of the so-called developing or developed worlds, at least on this side, um, the commercial food system is not good. A lot of parts of Europe, you can still, you know, get good quality food from a regular store, and but um, over here, definitely the food is a lot more processed. So when you're dealing with commercial food, whether it's a plant or an animal, doesn't matter if it's, if it's apples, onions, corn, wheat, greens, strawberries, it doesn't matter. Um, a lot of those plants are plants are grown in soil that's overworked. The soil in the United States and big large commercial farms, the soil is completely overworked. It's depleted of nutrients. A lot of the food um, that we consume like on the East Coast comes from the West Coast or it comes from South America or the Caribbean. Stuff is traveling a far distance. A lot of the food in the Caribbean is coming from the mainland United States. So people are not consuming local foods, stuff is old, okay, um, so mass production of food, whether it's plants or animals, is not good. All means is this raw, un um, unrefined form, okay, so there's a lot of frozen yogurt places opening now that are all zero fat, like all these places, every city I go to, the new frozen yogurt spot, zero percent fat, zero percent fat, that's now that's a processed food, there's fat in the milk for a reason. Protein and fat work together, and is there for a reason. That's the whole food. Okay, so you start skimming out the fat, adding more sugar. But raw milk is a very high nutritious food. Um, there's a lot of controversy about milk. There are a lot of people who will say, well, you know, milk is only for baby cows or baby sheep. Um, some people say we can't digest milk. However, I will say that there are civilizations. Um, all throughout the planet, like specifically in the desert. So a lot of the desert people in Africa and in India um, did consume dairy, large amounts of it, and were very strong and healthy and produced healthy, perfect children, generation after generation. Um, the Maasai, six months before the woman um, wanted to conceive, they would go on a diet mostly of raw milk, okay? You have very high quality protein. So in the whole bodybuilding fitness world, 
whenever people go to a gym or any kind of you know fitness bodybuilding protein shake they always use whey protein whey protein naturally occurs in milk and it's known and the way it's known is by looking at scientific studies where they use markers where they're looking at how quickly the muscles uptake certain proteins. And in those studies you find that whey protein with its branched-chain amino acids, um, which are only common in animal foods, the branched-chain amino acids, I mean, that are, um, it makes it the best protein for muscle recovery. So when you are working out really hard and your muscles break down, it needs to build back up. So whey protein is, is the, one of the best proteins for that. Then there's the protein in egg yolk, okay? Egg yolk also has a very, very, very high um, quality of protein. And when I talk about quality, I'm talking about how easily our body and our muscles uptake that protein. Okay, the bioavailability. So you see in the stores, you see muscle milk, this new commercial brand that's supposed to be for um, working out, but it's all like whey protein isolate and all this isolated, chopped up chemical crap. It's not good. There's so many problems with muscle milk, but that's a discussion for another day. Raw milk in its raw form is, it has not been pasteurized or homogenized. When they pasteurize and homogenize it, the heat kills the good bacteria. Like, there's good bacteria in raw milk that helps with our digestive system and helps our immune system. It helps us digest the milk even, you know. Then you have homogenization, which is a process that the commercial food industry uses to extend the shelf life of the milk, where they heat the milk at such a high temperature that, like, let's say when you have uh, raw milk, you have the cream on top and then you have the milk. So the fat globules, you know, of the, the milk, let's say they were like this big before. Let's say the fat globules are this big. And our cells have cell walls. So the opening, cell walls have openings. So let's say the opening of the cell wall is like this, narrow, right? It's the opening. If the fat globules is big, it can't get in to the cell because it's too big. When they homogenize it, they heat it at such a high temperature that it makes the fat globule explode into all these little pieces. And then, um, now, so which makes it one homogenous liquid, this homogenization where it's not separated anymore. And now the fat cells can easily go into your blood cells. I mean, I'm sorry, into your cells of your body where they, they shouldn't have been, they're not supposed to be, you know. So homogenized milk has shown to cause serious problems in everyone, it's not good for anyone. There's studies that show that when cats consumed homogenized milk by the third generation, they were all infertile. So it's not good. But raw milk is something different. Okay, so when you're getting raw milk, especially from grass-fed cows or sheep or goats, um, camel's milk, it can be any of those, um, it has very high quality fats in it. The CLA and MCT fats, conjugated linoleic acid and medium chain triglycerides, Medium chain triglycerides are saturated fats, but they're medium chain. They're not long chain saturated fats, which are most of the fats in animal foods are long chain saturated fats. And we do need that, we just need it in a certain ratio. The medium chain triglycerides, which are shorter fats, they are digested much quicker, they help to boost their energy, they help to boost their immune system, they help us to burn fat. So the MC, there, you know, and there are fats that help you to burn fat. So MCTs and CLA fats, if you look at any commercial fat burning supplement in GNC or whatever, they always have MCT and CLA fats, always, okay? So those are fats that help you burn fat, and those are found in anim the animal foods of healthy animals. It's found in eggs and raw dairy and meat of animals that were grass-fed and ate with not grain-fed, not eating wheat and corn. You know, they're eating the grass and stuff, their natural diet. Um, after a workout, when you work out really intensely, especially when you're doing like strength training workout, um, you need fast absorbing protein and fast absorbing carbohydrates. And if you have about 30 minute time frame before and after your workout. Um, because our, our muscles use glucose as a source of fuel, to fuel the, our, our physical activity. So first, our body uses our blood glucose, which is the glucose free floating in our blood. And once that's used up, it taps into our muscle glycogen, which is the glucose that's stored in our muscle. And when you start depleting your muscle glycogen, you have to replenish it so that tomorrow you can go hard again. Because if you have to go hard every single day, like, you know, you're swimming three hours a day, doing capoeira for two hours, and then, you know, running. And, you know, people have really physical lives, which we all should. 
you know, like you should be able to sustain extreme physical activity. So you work out really hard and you, you expand, you expand, you have to put those fuels back. Same thing when you do like any kind of muscle, any kind of activity that breaks down muscle, which is all like fast switch type stuff, like plyometrics and sprints and lifting weights. And you need to put protein back in your system. Um, animal proteins are the best in terms of bioavailability, in terms of actually absorbing quickly and what they actually do to help build muscle. So yes, you can use plant proteins, um, but they're, they're second best. They're not the, the best thing. And different proteins and different fats and different carbohydrates exceed well at different things okay nutrition is very complicated because there's different kinds of omega-3 fats like the omega-3 fats in black seed oil is not the same as the one that's in fish oil it's not the same chemical form okay so when i'm talking about the best proteins for muscle okay recovery they are animal protein um specifically whey and egg yolk you know the, the, those two proteins um but so if you want something fast absorbing i don't believe in taking protein shakes commercial shakes with all the artificial coloring and dyes and everything and it's all you know um, processed so raw milk for those people who can, can consume raw milk a lot of people can't consume commercial milk but when they try raw milk or they try goat's milk they don't have a problem with it um, but if you do like some people have a problem eating strawberries but that doesn't mean that strawberries are bad for everyone so with any food that you eat you want to get the highest quality of it and if you have a problem with it then maybe that food doesn't vibrate well with you but that doesn't mean that it's not good for everyone Okay. And again, homogenized, pasteurized commercial milk is not good. Sometimes people think they're lactose intolerant, but they're really just reacting to that. So if you have yogurt or raw milk, which has the bacteria, which helps you to digest, it breaks down the proteins very quickly. And yogurt, the proteins are already pre-digested, so absorbs very quickly. Our muscles can uptake it very quickly. And then you have carbohydrates, which you need as well. And honey, Raw honey is great because it's a great source of carbohydrates, um, and they, they go, it goes with, with milk. And even in the Bible, you have a land of milk and honey. So there's so much to say about milk and honey, um, but they're both in a combination are excellent for your skin, um, and they both in combination are excellent drinks for energy because the enzymes and everything that's in raw honey, and you know, not, not commercial honey, not the honey that you get from Pathmark or, you know, I don't know, the regular supermarket. It's just a regular refined honey. Honey that has not been heated at a high temperature. And it's still raw, still has its enzymes in it. And it can be um, digested very easily. It does a lot to boost um, energy. Okay, and this is a good carbohydrate. We do need carbohydrates, okay, but you need the right kinds. So as opposed to eating like pasta, like a lot of marathon runners will eat all this pasta, which is a whole bunch of wheat, that's, that is not your best source of carbohydrate, okay? Because wheat causes a whole bunch of other problems. Um, so this is the beginning of talking about milk and honey, honey and milk, milk and honey, honey and milk. Um, there will be a part two where I get more into all the different uses and ancient uses of milk and honey, which that also includes being used as natural spermicides and things to help increase and decrease fertility, um, that will be in part two. So this is this for now. My name is Nikita Valletta, and you can find me on Facebook, and you can find me on Twitter at Queen underscore Makeda, M-A-K-E-D-A. And um, that's it for now. Thank you. Bye.